Well, hey, folks, I wanted to, as promised uh, from my Tuesday podcast on seed starting, uh, give you a view at the reconfiguration I've done with what was a, hydro uh, a hydroponic vertical farm uh, with three trays and now is a seed starting system and a hydroponic grow system uh, with two trays. And I wanted to talk about why I went to two trays. There's plenty of space here for a third tier. But the way I had it before, if you look at the old videos, there was a very little space for the top tray, and it was that shallow tray that's over there. We'll talk about that more in a second. And then there was about as much space as these two have for these two, but that put the lower tray way down about the top of where that jug is. And what that did is it made me have to use a very small or very low, it could be very you know high capacity, but very low uh, to the ground, not very deep, reservoir for hydroponic fluid or in this case since we're not doing any hydro right now all we're doing is we're doing all soil based stuff um water right and what that meant is these trays actually hold quite a bit of water when the cycle runs and i'll turn them on here in just a second but you can see these channels are designed to let all this water run out and i'll talk about how this works here in a second but because of that there's a lot of water taken from the reserve tank before we even get to these blocks and then, you know, we want to run our water level up to about right there to make sure we get a good infiltration of water on a 15-minute cycle. So I have this running. It's the wrong one. I have this running on a 15-minute on three-hour off cycle because it's just being used for um, irrigation right now, and that's plenty. And the way this works, I have this little excluder here so nothing falls down in the hole. It works like this ebb and flow on a timer that I've showed you in so many different systems, and I love this over a bell siphon. Water's coming in through right there, and that's a bulkhead sitting down there at the bottom. And that pump, it's all the way down in this barrel, is pumping water up through there. Eventually, it will get over to here, and it will start to overflow that stand up. That's what sets the level as to how high up the water will come in here. And as you can see, the water was up to almost that line. And so there's a lot of drop here, but with all this depth, it doesn't matter anymore. So I'm thinking about actually going to a, a, something with a little bit more capacity, as long as I can keep the rim below the, the, the tray, we can get return. And that's what's important. And the same thing is happening up here, of course. And these are just some, these are some rare mints that I'm going to probably actually be selling come uh, late spring. Uh, some pretty cool ones just down here. Uh, this one here is called Candy Pops. It was made by, all of these were uh, bred by a guy named Jim Westerfield. And this is a really unique mint. Uh, this is a mint that actually kind of tastes like a blending of thyme and oregano and other Italian seasonings, even though it's a mint. And it really does, it's pretty cool. Um, and then this is called Iced Hazelnut. And I'm just cloning these right now. Just, just and I'm gonna be cloning a bunch more. I just kind of got this thing reconfigured. But you can see this is a great way to start your seeds. And what I wanted to point out, I don't think I have one in here, but these trays, these four by two trays, a 1020 tray, which is a standard nursery tray, fits perfectly across this way. And it, this does not interfere. You can fit four 1020 trays into this system right now. And what that means is you can put in each 1020 tray, 72 cells of six packs, your little six packs like you buy at a nursery of plants, Right, so that's what, 144, 288 plants to a tray you can start if you're gonna start only small plants. If you wanna start, start bigger plants and uh, things like solo cups, you know, you're gonna start a lot less, but you're gonna have a heavier root system. You can see there's just holes drilled in the bottom. I mentioned in the show, and, and these ones were pre-drilled and I just didn't have time to mess with it, but if you put some holes, about four holes, about as high up as my thumb in your cups when you're doing this, you'll get even better uh, infiltration and in fact you can bring your level up a little less but you can see it's now it's functioning we've got water in through the delivery pipe this valve here is so that I can put some pressure to make sure we get flow all the way up and I can control the speed of the flow in I have valves at each input as well this vents the extra pressure because oxygen is good and it also aids with the return so now it's running you can see both return lines are dropping water in the system. Now let's say the timer kicks off. One-handed stuff here, the timer kicks off. So now there's your returns. 
they're going to slowly trickle out. And as we wait, you'll start to see bubbling down from the bottom. And that's because that, that all this water that came up here, and again, it could be fertilizing fluid. You can hear that one sucking, right? It's draining and the top one's going to go faster. It's draining right back through the hole that it was delivered through. I can't see in there to see if, if I've, yeah, there it is, right? See, it's just draining right back out of the delivery hole. And that's going to bring us down. And that's that basic ebb and flow. But this is how I've reconfigured it. Now, in, in the episode that I did, right, on seed starting on Tuesday, I said that if I had to do this again, I wouldn't use these deep trays. They cost more and then they have more capacity before they actually start to irrigate. You have all these deep channels. You can see that's a pretty deep channel. It's about past my uh, first knuckle, right? And that's a lot of water, so that exasperates this problem. So why didn't I use, you can see this flat tray here. This is designed more for what I'm doing. The, the depth of its channels, it's only that much. So it takes a lot less water to fill. Well, I have one of these, not two. And I kind of like uniformity. It's a little OCD going on. But the other thing is, I have plans for this tray. This tray is going to be kind of a, 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 a late spring into mid-season seed starting system. It's going to go in the greenhouse. And I'm going to tie it into one of my hydro systems that I already have in the greenhouse. So this is just going somewhere else. And so since I wanted one out there, I'm more comfortable dealing with these deep trays in here than I am out there. I've removed all the leka. That went to another aquaponics system. That's the media that was in here. This seems to work better. And I have less weight capacity issues. The system that I had built with these two trays filled with leka actually actively growing in them. I actually have some bending on the casters on the bottom, and it's, it's not been a problem since I went to this model. It's, it's not enough weight. That old system also had the reservoir down at the bottom using one of the, uh, the black and yellow totes as a reservoir. This seems to work better, and it is ideal for seed starting. Not, I don't think this is as ideal for growing aquapon or hydroponically in the winter, but you can. There's no reason that those little cubs can't be full of basil right there. And we could do them with, with hydro media, right, in the cups. We could do them, um, there's a, a ton of different ways we could do this. We could put a cover over and drop them through. You can do it any way you want. But this way, if I decide I want to grow some basil in here just to have some basil to eat, I can come in here, set some pots up for basil, drop them in, start growing basil, and just add hydroponic fertilizer to the water. It's not going to hurt these plants now, I don't need it for them because I've done a little bit of uh, organic fertilizer on top of the soil. To me, this is an ideal way to do things under the situation I'm in now. The one negative, I'm out here in my shop, cold time of year, you know, but how can we mitigate that? All we have to do is take some plastic and make a mini greenhouse over this really, really simply. And I think what I'm going to do, I have quite a bit of scrap lumber over there, including some siding. Um, I'll probably just cut a piece of siding. It's just a little bit bigger than this four by two top, so it overhangs about this far. And then frame around it with some one by or two by that I'll, I'll rip the two by in half with the table saw just so I make more efficient use of it. Because two by ripped in half is cheaper than one by, just saying. Um, and I don't need very heavy stuff for that. So that'll give me a frame, and then I'll just hang plastic off it. They don't have to be perfectly sealed in here for it to do a job. In fact, let it breathe, it's probably better. Then there's a lot of things I can do to mitigate the overnight drop in temperature because if you do that, the heat off these lights is not, not a lot, but inside there, it really warms things up, right? Um, but what I could do then is take a standard brooder heat lamp, right? Your little red lights that you put over your chicks, set one down here, and maybe right about here, up here maybe, hang a thermocube, which is a little... Looks like a little wall splitter plug, like you plug in to the wall and you get two out instead of one one out. Well, that thing has a little thermometer inside of it. It will come on at 35 and shut off at 45. And that would cycle that lamp down there and make sure the temperature in here never went below freezing. That's not ideal for growth, but it'll keep the plants alive overnight. And then you have plenty of heat during the day when the outside temperature warms up and the lights are running. I can also run the lights more in the evening than in the daytime. There's a lot of, you know, you can put that 
heat lamp on a on a timer, but I'm not comfortable with that because I don't know how hot it might get in there if I didn't have some th sort of thermostatic control. But those thermocubes, they're like 10 bucks. So 10 bucks, and I have plenty of heat lamps because of raising birds, and I have plenty of, um, you know, the, the light fixtures for them. And boom, then you've got a heater that will never let this system freeze. That's plenty of heat inside this small area. And what do you need for plastic? You can you can use cheap painter's plastic. I mean, it's like four or five bucks worth of plastic would do that. And you might wonder why the board on the top instead of just draping it over the top. I just think it'll work better. And I don't want to try to make a single piece. Basically, I want this piece here to kind of go up like this and then over the other side. And then this piece here, a second piece to do this. And again, I'm not really worried about sealing in the ends because I want to be able to very easily just kind of roll it up or push it out of the way and work. And one of the big things I've learned about these types of systems, when you're trying to maximize production to square foot, it's very tempting. And you might look at this and go, Jack, why, why, why did you do this? Why, why is this rack sitting this way? Why not put it up against the wall that way? Good question. And I always ran my systems that way until I ran my systems that way. What ends up happening is when you're trying to then work and you're trying to work back here, it's it's hard to see because I'm holding the, the phone myself, right? But you're in a very contorted manner. And when the whole thing's full of plants and you have a plant back there that needs some work, especially when you're doing actual growing instead of just seed starting, you don't tend to it. You don't harvest it as well. And things get out of control. When you're able to just reach right here, and then come around over here and just reach right here. It's much easier to maintain and take care of it. And so one of the thoughts I had, well, instead of jutting it way out like this, why not just turn it this way and leave space where you can get behind it? And there's a little space back here, but I can't fit in there, right? Well, the issue is it's two foot by four foot. You're going to need those two foot back here to be able to work. And really more like three. So you end up with it jutted out just as far. And it's actually less efficient use of space. So that's how I'm running things now, and if you built a system with three tiers and you like it and it's working, just because I reconfigured mine doesn't mean yours doesn't work anymore. I, every time I do a reconfiguration on something, people go, well, do you not do you not endorse the way you did it before? No, I, I keep, and I'll probably reconfigure this again. Um, this actually might get built into a permanent system. It, I might have greater flexibility by taking some of those timbers over there and building a custom rack for it, right? Um, where I can have three if I want to, or I can get the lower one a little bit higher because I can get the top one a little bit higher and keep the headspace. Uh, maybe I'll get to a situation where if I do that, I'll put the lights on some sort of a track where I can lower the lights because that would actually be nice. I would, I would love to have these lights right now about right here. But in another week, I want them here. In another week, I want them there. So what I've done, I've just gone to four lights and I'm on a 14 on, 10 off cycle since I don't really, you know, have the ability to move the lights up and down right now. So I'll probably reconfigure things, uh, you know, over and over and over. And that's what I do, guys. I keep trying different things so that you can look at your goals and pick the one that meets your needs. Because the reality is that right there will start more plants than I will ever need to start ever in my life. Right now I have more garden beds, more wicking beds, more aquaponics. I have more grow space than I will ever need, ever need infinity and so my job is to and, and kind of this actually hurts me because it's less efficient for me to try everything so you can look at it and determine what works for you anyway if you have any questions about what's going on here how this works or how it relates to previous versions thereof let me know and i'll try to answer you in the comment section